are you? Welcome back to my channel for just a chatty sit down video. I used to do these all the time and I've really missed doing them. So I'm excited to be doing one today all about living alone. If you're new here, if you don't know this about me, I am actually currently going through a divorce. So I'm learning to live alone after living with a romantic partner. And I've had a lot of people reach out, uh, moving out from their parents' home or just moving out to their own apartment after roommates, going through a breakup or also going through a divorce that had tips, tricks, thoughts, all that kind of stuff about living alone. So I wanted to do a video dedicated just to that. And there's gonna be three sections to this video. I will timestamp them out down below in case you're here for just one part of this video, but I wanted to start with some of the applicable tips, tricks, and even like purchases that help make living alone a little bit easier. And then as a way to just kind of like bond and chat and feel less alone, I asked you guys for the hardest parts about living alone to you. I have some of my own as well and the best parts, the really good things about living alone because it's good to focus on those as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. First section tips. This was like the main point of the video for me. So I wanted to start with it. I have my tips and then I have some tips from you guys. And some of your tips are absolutely brilliant and I will be implementing them. So this is what I said. First, chatty podcasts have been huge for me right now. I was just now listening to what we said as I was getting ready. I used to love true crime podcasts not the move when you live alone. So something that's like lighthearted, especially a couple friends just talking to each other, makes me feel like I'm a part of the conversation and I get to just be kind of a passive listener in on it and makes me feel less alone in my home, which is awesome. The next thing, I have a couple purchases that I made that are hugely helpful. I got smart lights. I got like the off brand, not like the Philips ones because those are really expensive. I think that they're called Wiz, but they're all app activated. And for me, that's helped me feel safe to where I don't have to turn off any lights until I'm in bed and then I can turn them off from my phone. And then also on the reverse, if I get scared or spooked, I can turn on lights without having to like get up and investigate. So that's been helpful for me just for like peace of mind. A gift from my dad is he got me really nice speakers. They were his, they're hand-me-downs. They're Sonos speakers and I have them in my den and I have music playing 24 seven. And for me, I leave it on even when I'm gone. I feel like it helps Max not bark at noises when I'm gone as well. And I just come home to music and it feels like there's more life in the space. I feel less alone. I don't love just silence. So that's helped me feel um, more at ease, I suppose, being alone. Next is a step stool. <laughs> I got like one of those nice like three step ladders that has come in handy way more than I realized. I was living with a six foot one man and used to just be able to say like, hey, can you help me change this light? Can you grab this from the top shelf? Whatever. Or I would climb on countertops, which is probably not safe when you're living alone because should you fall, nobody's there to call for help. Uh, so getting a step stool is something that I'm glad I did. Next is another purchase that a lot of people told me to get and I love having it and it's a Furbo dog camera if you have pets. This has helped me feel peace of mind when I'm gone because it will give me alerts and notifications if he's barking or if there's a fire alarm going off, which has happened three times since moving into this apartment. Um, and then also when I am in my bedroom, if I get spooked about anything in the den, I can check the Furbo cam and kind of look around the den without leaving the safety of my bed. So it's kind of a two for one with pets and then also for like home security purposes. Something that I've been trying to be really intentional about is inviting people over to my home instead of just going over to theirs. Um, I feel like there's a lot of benefits and a lot of people actually said this as their tip as well. It even when they leave, it just feels like there's more of a spirit of life in your apartment. Um, and then also for me, it forces me to pick up and to clean instead of just, you know, throwing clothes in the dirty hamper, I actually scrub the toilet and wash the sinks and do those types of chores that can easily slip through when you're living alone. And it also gives me something to look forward to, um, knowing like I have a full day at home alone doing work, but tonight I have a couple girls coming over and that just like gives me something to look forward to. This might be silly, but for me, I did not feel comfortable like this is my home until I got plants. I moved from states, so I couldn't bring any of my plants with me, which was really sad. But um, as soon as I got new plants in this apartment, I felt like, okay, there is life. There is something to take care of. There is something breathing. 
in a sense. Something that needs sunlight just like me. It made it just feel more like home. This next one is like a treat yourself thing. I used to save nice candles for when people come over, but mm -mm. I light those nice candles for me. For me, it makes us feel like a little bit of a retreat. I have a very nice anthropology one going in my kitchen right now as we speak. And it just brings like a feeling of like warmth and almost kind of luxury that is, it's a treat and I like it. And my last tip is having a white noise machine at night. I have this going because ignorance is bliss. And if you hear a scary noise, you're gonna freak yourself out about being alone in a home. And I bet you 99.99999% of the time that noise is not actually a threat. So I would just rather not hear those noises and sleep soundly. And so I actually have two white noise machines in my bedroom that I sleep with every night. I have a little one and then I have an air filter that I crank up to full blast when I go to sleep because it also has like a fan noise. And that has helped me not unnecessarily worry about what I'm hearing. Your tips for living alone, I love them. First, the most common tip was get a pet. People were like, even if you can't get a dog or a cat, like get, uh, I had a turtle when I lived alone for a while. It was, I talked to it, his name was Potato. May he rest in peace, I miss him. Um, but any sort of pet does really help. You have something to take care of and you don't feel so weird talking to it because it is alive. <laughs> this is something that I think is very smart and that I've been learning the hard way, but making friends in a similar stage of life when I was married, I hung out with mostly married people. I have found that I have been in situations, multiple like book clubs, Bible studies and things where I'm the only not married person in the room. And it just kind of reinforces like, I don't know that I feel different from the life stage I was in. Um, so since moving to this apartment, I've started to make more friends that are also single, living alone or not married. And that has helped me feel like, okay, there's other people that are doing this, they're thriving and we can like talk and bond over that. And I don't feel so different. And I don't feel like I'm constantly reminded of how things have changed for me. I like this one. Someone said, create rituals that make you feel comforted, especially in the evening. I feel like if you are going through something hard, which is why you're living alone, like I am, evening is when emotions kind of peak, at least for me like when sad thoughts or bad thoughts can kind of rear their head the most. So doing something that is comforting, whether it is lighting a candle and making like a sleepy time tea or playing chill acoustic music and reading a book for 30 minutes, whatever that might be that it's like, okay, this is my time to wind down is helpful. And I wanna start implementing that because I don't really have a routine right now, except for scroll through my phone before I go to bed, which is bad. <laughs> Someone said, challenge yourself to leave once a day run a little errand, take a walk, whatever that might be. And I like that. I think I've been pretty intentional about that since moving here to Austin, but I did live alone when I was probably 20 and being self-employed, I would sometimes realize, oh, it has been three days since I've opened my front door. And that would just be like a gross feeling for me. So I think that that's a good thing to keep in mind. Someone said, get basic tools, you will need them. My sweet dad got me a tool set and I will say I have opened that maybe once a week, which is surprising. I didn't think I really needed them, but they do come in handy. I love this one. Someone said, send voice memos to people if you wanna share something without actually committing to a full phone call, which I've done this, I love this. Sometimes you just wanna have like, a, like a quick interaction, but a phone call can feel so formal and like, okay, now how do I end this, you know? And I've done this to my parents and some of my best friends. I'm like, hey, guess what just happened? Like, don't wanna disturb you, I know you're working. And then later when they're free, they send one back and it's awesome. This person said, make your space cute, comfy, and personal. Um, I'm a big believer and, and you don't have to like spend money to do this necessarily, but you know, create some DIY art or go thrifting or whatever it might be to really curate a space that feels like you and that makes you happy because for me this is my little cocoon this is my little safe space and it does make being here feel so much more enjoyable even if i'm here alone helpful someone said she buys frozen things as much as possible especially like vegetables so that they don't go bad that's something that i'm learning how to do right now is i buy produce and it's just me and it goes bad. So I'm gonna implement this and buy more frozen things. Make extra keys and leave some with trusted friends. That is a great idea because should you get locked out or should you need a favor, if you're alone and no one has the key, sorry, tough luck. 
I need to do that. I haven't done this yet, but it would be very helpful. So maybe even leave one with a neighbor friend. And so if I accidentally leave a candle lit or something, I can just text them and say, hey, help. <laughs> Put recurring tasks like changing air filters or whatever that might be into calendar or reminders. I am probably nearing needing to change my air filter and I did not even think about that. So thank you. This is a great idea. Introduce yourself to neighbors. Yes. I did not do that at my last apartment because um, I wasn't living alone. And I've done that here and it feels so nice to know there's trusted people in your building that if there's a, if there is a fire alarm going off, you could text them and be like, hey, what do you know what's happening? Whatever that might be, it is nice. Have friends stay the night occasionally. It helps break up the routine. I've had multiple spendies, sleepover parties since moving in here. And that is something that you just don't really do as often when you're married. And so for me, that's been kind of a fun little treat of being like, okay, there's perks to this phase of life. This is fun. I like it. I'm biased, but someone said this, not me. And I think it is great. It said, watch YouTubers. It's like sitting and chatting with a friend. That's what I do as well. Um, and thank you to people that choose to do that too, because it helps me stay employed. <laughs> I like watching YouTube more than TV because it feels so much more personal and connected and interactive and real. Last one, someone said, especially if you're going from a relationship to living alone as body pillows are helpful. I've been letting my dog sleep in my bed, <laughs> which I'll probably regret down the line. A body pillow sounds like a great idea to like fill up that empty space in your bed. And I think let's quickly, let's talk about the hardest parts of living alone and the wonderful, great things as well. The hard parts for me is dog mom guilt is one of them. I have huge dog mom guilt if I'm gone. Probably like more than three hours, I start to feel like, is Max okay? Is he sad? Is he lonely? Is he bored? I have hired wags and stuff in the past, which helps, but still when you share a home with someone, there's more people around. Um, so that's been hard. For me, feeling unsafe is hard, uh, especially sharing my life online. I feel like I'm like extra susceptible to scary things happening. So that's been hard. I'm very glad I live in an apartment. I feel a lot safer than a house. So I actually have no desire to live in a house anytime soon just for safety. And also for me, handyman projects, silly things like hanging shelves and whatever. Um, thankful and so incredibly blessed that I do have my parents nearby, but uh, when I lived out in California by myself, I just had to figure it out. The things that you said are hardest is cooking for one, and that is so hard. That's why I've, there's like several brands I've worked with in videos. This is not sponsored by the way, this video. It is why I have used them so much and love them so much because cooking for one is so hard. So especially dishes, I've loved Daily Harvest because it is healthy and easy and there's no dishes and it's a single serving. I've loved Tovala. Um, it's my smart oven that I am in love with. They have like fresh meals that you can just scan and it, it's very healthy. And then when I do want to cook, I have changed my every plate order to um, the small box. So it's already portioned and there's no waste and um, I can have that cooking experience without it all going bad. <laughs> so that has helped me because cooking for one is really hard. I relate to this a lot, but someone said being touch deprived, not throwing shade. I already felt like I was touch deprived in my marriage. I still feel touch deprived, but without the hurt, <laughs> but my love language is touch. And I'm also very weird about who touches me because it's my like, love language and I don't want to just like go hug random strangers or I don't know. I feel that a lot and it is very hard to feel just deprived of that for sure. Someone said the silence. I get that, which is why I have music playing all the time or chatty podcasts. Someone said going to sleep alone. It is hard. I'm there. I'm there with you. A lot of people said bugs, killing bugs, getting spiders out of the house. I personally have no issue with bugs at all, but that was a, a big recurring one for people. So was it having all the chores fall on you? I felt like I did that pretty much by myself when I live with people. But for me, the harder part is the tasks, not so much the chores. So for example, remembering to get your like registration renewed and your oil changed and pay your Wi-Fi bills, your renter's insurance and like all those types of things. It all relies on your brain. You don't have a second brain to be like, oh, when was the last time we put gasoline in our car? That was a bad example. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that you have to actively contact someone if you want to share something and that it isn't like in the moment. Like if you get an exciting offer at work or whatever it might be, you can't be like, 
oh my gosh, guess what just happened? You have to be like, hello, guess what happened earlier today? And last, I relate with this a lot, yet again, being a touchy person. It says not having someone there to hug after a tough day. And that is hard. And even just saying that out loud makes me emotional because that is very hard. Um, I'm gonna gather myself and we're gonna talk about the best parts because we're gonna end on a happy note. These are my favorite parts of living alone. For me, the house is always clean. I cannot focus, think, work if the house is messy. So I just love that I know if I clean it, it will be clean. That is great. My ex loved to have TV on in the background all day as he worked and I am very like noise sensitive. I'm a music girl, I'm not a TV girl. So being able to not have TV on in the background is huge. I love that. <laughs> in relation to noise is my job was filming and I love that I can film with no guilt. I don't have to worry about disrupting anybody. I don't have to say like, hey, can you turn that down? I'm trying to film. It is my job. So it's really nice to be able to do my job without feeling guilty about it and without feeling like I'm being a burden or an inconvenience or whatever that might be. So for me particularly, that has been the number one perk. This sounds weird um, and it's gonna sound weird to try to put it into words but it's kind of nice to just know that I am going to do everything myself instead of feeling like I should ask for help. I've always really struggled with asking for help from people, especially or even in relationships, even with my significant other. Every single time I would have to say like, hey, can you help me with this? It was like, I felt like such a burden and that is probably all work I need to do on myself. But it's kind of nice to just be like, I, this is this is me. This is me, I'm gonna do it myself. It falls on me or it doesn't happen either way. It's fine. <laughs> and last but not least, I love that there is never any sports on. I grew to like baseball, um, but there was all sports on constantly and I just, it's so nice that I do not have to turn on sports in my house. Some sporting events like basketball, especially the squeaks, the squeaks of the tennis shoes really get to me. I don't know if I have like hypersensitivity to noises. I think I honestly might because it would just like, of course would never say that out loud to a person watching it because I do not want to seem like a diva. But now that I don't have to endure that, I feel like I can say it out loud, even if it makes me sound a little bit diva-ish. These are the best parts from you. Um, a lot of people said the opposite of me of like, I can leave my house messy and no one will judge me, which I think is so interesting. We all love to have our home a particular way, whether it's like, I don't have to clean if I don't want to, or if it's like, my home is always clean. So I thought that was interesting. A lot of people said having time to recharge alone. If you live with your significant other, I'm sure that's hard to do. I could see if you especially work from home with your significant other and you never have time alone, that that would be a nice change. Choosing when I get to see other people, especially having other people over. I do remember living with roommates. Occasionally they would invite their friends over, of course, but it is kind of something that you have to think about of like, oh, I really wanted to just like veg out tonight, but people will be in my home. So dealing with that, I get that. that that is a nice change to fully have control over that. Studying, working in total silence. Yes, I get that too. This one, you can decorate exactly how you want. That's been huge and really great. Not having to be on all the time. I get that with uh, roommates and even with living with family. I felt like I could just be myself in relationships, but having to convince people that you're okay, you know, is like a subtle thing that I do. And when you're alone, you don't have to do that. And that is really nice and freeing. Not having to coordinate schedules, Yes, especially when you're inviting someone over, like, hey, can I have girls over on Tuesday? Oh, shoot, you have a meeting, a virtual meeting Tuesday night. Okay, sorry, I will reschedule. That whole conversation. It's nice to not have to have that. Last but not least, someone said, I spend way less money on groceries and I have a much cleaner fridge. Also true. My grocery bills have been half. It has been very nice. Um, it's great. It's awesome. <laughs> Hopefully this made you feel a little less alone or helped you kind of mentally prepare for changes in your future or gave you some tips and tricks for a phase of life you're in or will be in. I love sit down chatty videos. Like I said, this was the video format that I did for like year two and three of my channel. We did a lot of different topics. A lot of it was wedding planning, ironically enough, but money, relationships, all that kind of stuff. So 
If there's a specific video that you would like in this format, I would love your ideas. I'm gonna do like a brainstorming session soon. Comment down below and I'll throw these in maybe once, twice, three times a month. I don't know, give or take. I'm continuing to learn a lot and as I've been kind of like learning things and coming to realizations, I've been sharing it in vlogs. So if you're new here and would like to stick around and hang out more often, it would mean so much if you wanted to subscribe. And thanks for just choosing to click on this video and hang out with me and build this community. I love y'all. And I say that all the time because I truly mean it. I think about it every day. I'm like, I love this community that we've built and like how kind and supportive everybody is here and it means the world. So I love you. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye. So give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Just give me one more. Talking to you. Talking to you. Here we go again, staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here? I wanna...